Hyundai has launched its second electric vehicle onto the Australian market. Unlike the Ioniq that they launched in December 2018, which is a standalone new model shape, their latest electric vehicle is the Kona SUV, based on the existing petrol model. The electric version was first launched in Korea in June 2017. Like the experience of hybrids before them, this is bringing electric power into the mainstream models rather than just special different vehicles. There are two specification levels, the Elite and the Highlander. With improved overall performance, including an extended range, it is a great example of an electric vehicle, but it comes at a price. The outside style of the original Kona is distinctive without being over the top and has been well accepted. We interviewed the designer of the Kona when it was first launched in Australia with petrol engines in 2017. The Kona Electric has a few cosmetic differences to the petrol models. It has a closed front grille with a dimple pattern, the rear has a wave-shaped rear bumper and the 17-inch alloy wheels are optimised for aerodynamics. It has six exterior paint colours and a no-cost option of a contrasting roof tone for the Highlander versions, but that does delete the sunroof. The interior is relatively simple yet stylish. For all exterior paint options you can get a black leather interior, but with the exterior colours of galactic grey and ceramic blue and chalk white, you can choose a stone grey blue leather interior trim. The multi-tone colour scheme is resplendent of the interiors of many concept cars shown at motor shows, and I like the look, but it will show the dirt and scuff marks more clearly. The infotainment system is displayed on an 8-inch screen, and you can get Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and DAB Plus digital radio, and also of course Bluetooth connectivity. The sound comes through an 8-speaker Infinity audio system. The upmarket Highlander has a wireless inductive charging pad for mobile phones with a feature I think is marvellous. The car warns you if you have left the phone in the holder when you get out. The dials in front of the driver are simple. Hybrid cars and many other vehicles have developed a plethora of visual information but the Kona moves back to straightforward clarity. You can get helpful and feel-good information such as the available range and the kilometres you have recouped through regenerative braking. The electric Kona comes well appointed in comfort and convenience. The base model Elite includes auto dust sensing headlights, LED daytime running lights, rear park assist system, rear view camera, tyre pressure monitoring system, electronic park brake smart key and push button start, climate control with automatic defog and rain sensing wipers. There's another feature. I find at the end of a trip I am rarely in the mood to think of things such as when is the best time to charge the car and how much range is left. Therefore I particularly like the Hyundai Auto Link module. The Kona Electric has the premium version of this system. With this you can link your car to your phone and then in the quietness and comfort of your home you can log in and set the best time for recharging such as making use of off-peak prices and review other facts. Now if you move up to the Highlander you add some extra features including front park assist, LED headlights and front indicators, LED tail lights, wireless charging pad as I mentioned, a glass sunroof although that goes if you have a two-tone colour scheme, heated front seats, and they're also air ventilated, which in Australia's hot climate, I think that's fantastic. You also get power drivers and passenger seats, and a head-up display. The electric power plant in the Kona is a beauty. With a very credible 150 kilowatts and a huge 395 newton metres of torque, it performed admirably. The big news is that the Kona Electric has a real-world battery range of 449 kilometres and you can get an 80% charge on the fast 100 kilowatt charger in 54 minutes or 75 minutes on the 50 kilowatt charger 
If you plug it in at home to your 240 volt AC, charging will fill the battery up in 9 hours and 35 minutes. I started a launch drive in the city and found the Kona a calming vehicle to drive. Without as much noise and with very smooth delivery of power added to the comfort and safety features, it was a very complete package. With four drive modes, Echo, Echo Plus, Comfort and Sport, you can pick a power delivery for every occasion. Beyond the city, the Kona was really a very good Grand Tourer. In sport mode, when faced with an overtaking manoeuvre where there was not a lot of room, the car surged forward with a sound like the Starship Enterprise and a stability that gave you great confidence. While the Kona is an SUV, the electric model is only front wheel drive and if you are starting out on a slight hill on dirt, the strong power and torque from zero revs makes it very hard not to spin the wheels. The dimensions of the Kona Electric are nearly the same as the petrol version and the rear cargo space is 332 litres behind the rear seats or 1114 litres with the rear seats folded. The big difference with the electric Kona is the weight. A petrol Kona weighs between 1290 to 1414 kilograms. The electric Kona, with its large batteries, adds 23 to 31% extra weight at 1685 to 1743 kilograms. It was good to see that the Kona has good safety features and the Hyundai SmartSense safety package as standard in both models. Features include front collision avoidance assist, forward collision warning, smart cruise control with stop and go, driver attention warning, lane keep assist, blind spot collision monitoring and rear cross traffic collision warning. Ah, but here's the punch. The electric Kona is not cheap. The base model Elite has a recommended price of a smidgen under $60,000 while the Highlander is $64,450 to both you have to add on-road costs. At the time we drove the electric Kona, Hyundai is offering a base model petrol go version for $25,990 drive away with either a $1,000 factory bonus or 80,000 velocity points. That is of course a base model but the top of the range petrol version is still some $25,000 or more cheaper than the electric car. Your fuel bills with the electric car will be reduced, as will your service costs, but this still means the electric Kona will target more at early adopters rather than across the board market segment. So in conclusion, as far as electric vehicles go, the Kona is a great car. It has good range and great performance, is easy to use and has reduced operating costs. As an SUV, it only has a bit of ride height for non-bitumen surfaces, but in terms of showing the progression of electric vehicles, it does its job particularly well. Its price is still too high to be a big seller, but it will certainly be a hero car for Hyundai, who have committed considerable resources in Australia to promoting alternative fuels.